So here I am again. I did a video on how to make Midori inserts uh, last week, um, like these, to go into a traveler's regular size Midori traveler's notebook. And I seem to have opened up a little bit of a Pandora's box. Um, a lot of people now are asking me, well, how do you make the Midori? <laughs> You can order them online, uh, the actual brand Midori, uh, Midori Traveler's Notebook. You can order them online at various different places, but what I have, I guess, is what they call a faux dory or a fake dory <laughs> um, because I made it myself. This is a piece of leather that um, happened to be in my husband's workshop, and I cut it to make the cover and punched it and put the elastics in myself. So I'm going to show you how to make this. It is really easy. I don't have a piece of leather at the moment, so I'm just going to demonstrate using a piece of cardstock for the cover portion. And you'll just have to pretend it's leather that I'm using. So you're going to need a few things. Um, you're going to need you're either going to need a piece of leather, which is the most durable thing to make this out of. Um, it really takes a beating. And the more scuffed and nicked, I don't know how well you can see that, but the more scuffed and nicked and um, ratty it kind of gets, the better it looks. I've been using this for a couple of years now, and it is pretty worn, but it's still in great condition. You can wipe it off. I mean, mine has something spilled on it at the moment that I need to clean off, but anyway. Leather works best. Um, if not, you can buy faux leather at craft stores. Um, you can buy a piece of vinyl. Um, anything at all that's durable that you can use for the outside cover. You could even make it out of fabric if you wanted to sew some sort of fabric cover with something in the middle, like in between a couple of layers to make it stiff. Um, you could even do that, but I'm just going to demonstrate using a piece of card stock. So what you're going to need, um, you're going to need a couple of different items. You're going to need uh, whatever you want to use for your for your cover. Okay, you are going to need scissors, um, a pencil or pen to mark your um, stuff with. Uh, you may need, well, you are going to need a ruler, an X-Acto knife of some sort, or, or a cutting knife of some sort. Um, I'm actually going to use a paper trimmer because I'm going to cut mine with a paper trimmer, but you won't need a paper trimmer. You are also going to need something to punch the holes in the Midori with. Now, I have, I have a hole punch... Um, that I have from when I was scrapbooking. Um, it's a spring-loaded thing that I use, but um, you could use an awl um, with a mallet or a hammer or um, anything sharp, I guess, to punch the holes with. You're also going to need elastic, okay? Now you can purchase proper Midori last elastic online. I think this thing is trying to focus because I'm moving around so much, sorry about that. Um, you can purchase proper Midori elastic online, but what I did was I went out and purchased um, some elastic like this. It's thick elastic cord. And I got that at Michael's. Um, and you can just cut it to whatever size you need. You're also going to want, if you want to fancy it up a bit, something for a charm for the front of your Midori. 
So I have an extra one here. And if you've noticed, I actually have some little charms on the edges of my holes here to kind of, you know, protect them a bit and fancy it up a bit. I happened to purchase a package of these. Let's see if I can get that in focus. They're just metal buttons. I got these at Michael's as well. Okay. I think that's pretty much it. I'll put a list in the description box of what you'll need. Okay, so let's get started. You're going to take your piece of leather, vinyl, plastic, whatever it is, whatever you're using for your cover. And you are going to need to cut it this size, 10 and a quarter wide, okay, by eight and a half high. If you fold out my cover, that's the size of my cover, okay? Now, when I have all of my inserts in my cover, because I like a fairly thick notebook, I usually have about um, three... I usually have three notebook inserts along with this folder that I made and um, what else? And a calendar, a pocket calendar. I usually have all of that stuffed in my notebooks. My notebook is fairly thick and when my cover wraps around it, the inserts come right out to the edge or they might even peek out a little bit. If you want your cover a little bit wider to make sure that it, you know, it covers up your notebooks completely, then you're going to want to cut your cover a little bit larger than 10 and a quarter inches wide. Okay? But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going with 10 and a quarter. All right? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut your piece of whatever sort of material you've chosen. And I have this template that I cut out uh, that I use whenever I decide I want to make a new cover. Because if you're making it out of vinyl or you want to use, you want to have different colors or you want to change up your cover, you can always, you know, Cut yourself a new one and make a new one. That's the good thing about this. So you would just use your scissors or your X-Acto knife, whatever you have. When I cut my leather, I think I use just my X-Acto knife and my metal ruler. And again, because this is just for demonstration purposes, I'm just making this fake cover out of this bit of cardstock I have here, just to give you an idea of how it's done. Okay. So this is going to be my cover, all right? Which is going to be folded in half, of course. All right, as your insert cover. Or not your insert cover, your Midori cover. Now, what you need to do is you're going to need to cut or punch two holes at the top fairly close together and two holes at the bottom fairly close together for your large elastic to go through. Okay, because this is the binding system for the Midori. The binding system for the Midori consists of, I've got too many straggly ends here on mine. Let me just cut these off. There we go. Binding system for a Midori consists of um, one large elastic that runs woven in between these punched holes and then another one that runs through a center hole to use as an enclosure that you can wrap around the Midori to close it up, okay? So the holes that you're going to want to punch you're going to want to punch these, and you're probably not going to see this when I'm marking it, so I will show you in a second. But you're going to want to punch these 
from the edge of your the top of your Midori cover, you're going to want to punch one hole at a quarter inch and one hole at a half inch. Okay? And same thing with the bottom. Come in from the bottom a quarter inch and punch one hole at a quarter inch and punch one hole at a half inch. Now, the reason that I chose those hole sizes specifically is because it was the right size, the right spacing for my buttons. Okay? These buttons, the holes are a quarter of an inch apart. So I came in about a quarter of an inch from the top and I punched two holes to match my button. Whatever you're going to use for your charm on the outside of your Midori, measure the holes. Lay the charm on the Midori first, see the placement of it, and mark your holes on your fabric or whatever. So you would lay your charm down and mark your holes with your pencil through the, uh, through the charm. Okay? So these measurements may not be right depending upon what you choose for a button or a charm or a clasp to put on the outside of your Midori here. Okay, just keep that in mind. So we're just going to poke those holes. And this makes a little bit of noise, so just excuse me for a minute while I'm punching this. My desk is vibrating. So there's my holes punched in my cover. Okay. The next hole you're going to want to punch is going to be dead center of your Midori. So again, you're going to measure your Midori from top to bottom. Okay, from top to bottom. And you're going to put a hole right in the center. So your Midori is eight and a half tall. And we're going to go about here should be center four and a bit. Okay, that's where my center hole is going to go. All right, there we go. So I have all the holes punched. Now, easy peasy. This is even easier than the insert to make. Once your cover is all punched and you end up with a piece of leather or vinyl that looks like this, you're going to cut one large length of elastic. Okay? And your elastic has to be large enough. I'm just going to unwind this here. It has to be large enough to go through the holes at the top and bottom and be able to tie in the middle. Okay, so I tend to thread it first and then cut when I'm done threading. Now the question is, how easily am I going to be able to get this through here? So, um, what's the best way for me to do that? I wonder if I had a darning needle. Hang on, I'm just going to get a darning needle. Stand by. Okay, my apologies there. So I got a large darning needle um, that you would use for sewing up, say, you know, needlework or crochet. It's got a very large eye in it, but yet it's still small enough to go through the holes in my buttons, okay? I've just threaded my elastic through it. And what you're going to do, move this out of the way, is you're actually, let's see if I can uh, zoom in here a little bit. Let's try that. Okay. You're actually going to go out through the top hole of your Midori. Okay. Flip it over. And you're going to thread your charm on, oops, like so. And then you're going to go in through the other hole on your charm 
and back in through the Midori, like so. Okay, you see that? Then you're going to flip it back over to the front. Okay, you're going to do the same thing on this side. You're going to go out through the lower hole, the hole that's closest to the center. Okay, you're going to flip it over. This is where you would thread through your charm. I'm not going to bother to do it on this side. You would go in through one hole, out through the other. Then back in through this hole, furthest away from the center and closest to the edge. Okay. And so now we have our elastic. We have one elastic that's in between, that runs between the short holes, and we have another one that runs, okay, from the top hole to the top hole. I'm just going to pull my elastic back a bit just to make this a little bit um, tighter here. Okay, your elastic, you're going to want to tie a little tight. So when you tie it, your Midori should curl just slightly, okay? You don't want to tie it so that it's completely flat because then this elastic is going to be way too loose. When you try to put your inserts in, it won't hold them um, it won't bind them into the book tightly enough. So you're going to want to tie your Midori uh, just so the elastic, just so it's tight enough that this starts to curl a little bit on the ends. So I'm going to cut that elastic to make this easier to tie. Okay. And I'm going to tie my elastic in a knot. I really hope you can see what I'm doing and that this camera is in focus. Okay, and you're going to pull that knot really tight. And as you can see, I have my elastics now and this is curling just slightly. Same as my leather cover, okay? doesn't lie flat, it kind of springs up a little bit, okay? And I've had this elastic in here the whole time I've owned this Midori for a couple of years now, okay? Now, if you want a bookmark of some sort, you can tie a string with another charm on it around the end of one of the elastics. If not, don't worry about it. But that's where you would tie your bookmark at the top of an elastic. Now for your center hole, same thing. You're actually going to string an elastic, put it through the center hole, leaving your end inside. Go through whatever charm you want on the outside of your Midori and then back in through the center hole again. Okay, and then once you're done, I'm going to get rid of this piece of paper because that's not going to work anymore. Once you're done, you will have this. And that's how simple it is to make a Midori. So you've got this double piece of elastic now inside, and you've got your clasp. Okay, just tied in a knot there so it doesn't come out. Nice thing about these is if you want to change the color of your elastics to change up the look of your Midori, you can do so. So, how do you load the Midori? If you want to put one insert into your Midori, one single insert, you're going to find the center of your insert and you're going to slide it under the, the tallest elastic. So the elastic that's running from the top hole on each end. Okay, then you still have the other side of the elastic, the little side. And that's it. One insert in your notebook, it can't come out. And your bookmark, you can put inside like so. Okay. What if you want to put in two inserts? Well, there's two ways to do that. You can either 
slide your other insert under the smaller elastic that's left because these stretch quite a bit. Okay, so you have one insert here and one insert here. Done. Okay, or there's another way you can do it. You can actually take a Midori elastic, which I have another one here that I made myself, or you can order them. Hang on, I'm just going to cut the end off this because same sort of thing. It's got ratty ends on it. Here we go. Okay, here's my other elastic. You can hook your elastic over the middle and then hook the same elastic over the middle of your other insert, like so. Now both of your inserts are hooked together, okay? Then you just slide this contraption underneath the tallest elastic in your Midori. And that hooks that in. Now when you insert your inserts like that, what it does is it still leaves your binding elastics in the center, you can see that, exposed which is great if you want to add even more inserts. So if you want to add in a pocket calendar, for example, you just find the center again of your booklet and you can slide that under. This is a small book, so I'm going to slide it underneath the small elastic here, the one that's in between the two shortest holes. And now my calendar is in the middle of my two um, things and they can't come out. See? They are really sturdy. They're really hooked in. There's no way there's no way these are falling out. Okay? What about if I want to put my pockets in? Or what about if I want to add another insert? Well, it's a couple of ways to do that. You can join your pockets and another insert using the same method, sliding two elastics around the center so that they are joined like the first two books we put in. And then you can slide those in between your tallest elastic again. So now I actually have three notebooks, my folder and my pocket folder, and my calendar, all in my Midori. Okay? And again, they won't fall out. They can't fall out. The elastic binding keeps them all in. But, like I was saying, because I like my my notebook to be a bit chunky because I carry a lot of things with me. You can see how these inserts kind of stick out a little bit. I have to make sure they're pushed in, um, you know, really well. So sometimes my inserts will get a bit ratty on the ends, which I also don't mind. Um, I just find that just adds to the character, if you will, of my notebooks. Uh, this is one that I've been using for a while and you know, it isn't too ratty. Yes, the ends are a little bit tattered, but it doesn't really matter to me. It just adds character to it as far as I'm concerned. So if you want these completely covered up though all the time and you because you want your book so thick, like I was saying, you're going to have to cut your cover a little bit wider than what I've cut mine. So guys, that's it. That is how you make a Midori. Once your bookmark is inside, this elastic goes around the outside. And there you have it. There, oops, there is your traveler's notebook. All complete and put together. I hope that was of some help. I hope that answers some questions. How I discovered how to make a Midori was through 
Ray Blake. If you Google him, he has a, um, I don't know if it's a blog or a website where he actually has measurements, tells you step by step how to make it. He does have a video on YouTube as well um, on how to make a Midori. Um, there's a lot of different videos on YouTube. You can just search um, how to make Midori, how to make Fodori, F-A-U-X-D-O-R-I, because technically it is not a Midori because it's not a Midori brand. It is a fake Dori. <laughs> When I made my uh, folder insert, this was a file folder, a regular legal size file folder that I cut down, folded, and glued so that I would have pockets. Um, and I had a strip of leather that was left over, and I just used my hole punch and I riveted on a little strip to the folder for my fountain pen. Um, so it's fairly secure there, and I just I just pop it out and um, write with it, and then put it back in. Yeah, because I'm a little bit of a stationary pen addict as well, so I like my fountain pen. Anyway, that's it. And then when my elastic goes around, it goes right around the pen and all. It just a little bit of extra security. So that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I will do my best to try and answer them for you. And, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And we'll see you again soon. Bye.